Hello. We're continuing with our October series, Fall Into the All, learning how to truly relax into the arms of the divine and be renewed. And our message today is Beneath the Mask. Regardless of whom we are, at different times in our lives, we all wear a mask. What's a mask? Generally speaking, it's a covering for the part of the face or for all of the face. And it's typically worn to conceal a person's identity. It might be grotesque or humorous. It might be worn at a carnival, at masquerades, even at Mardi Gras. Anything that disguises or conceals is a mask. And I'm sure that my mask didn't disguise or conceal who I was. And I'd like to thank our reader, Judy Johnson, and our wonderful music that we have today by Karen Drucker, as well as our CSL music team that always provides great music. And this week, to fall into the all, to truly relax in the arms of the divine, we might pay more attention to any of the masks that we wear, especially those ones that aren't quite as obvious as the one I was wearing. So your question for the week is this, what is the one choice that you can make today to release the mask you wear, to step fully into being your true self and to know your light creates miracles? One more time, what is the one choice that you can make today to release the mask you wear to step fully into being your true self and to know your light creates miracles. What if I asked you right now, how are you? I'm your minister, so you most likely would give me the truth. And perhaps for some of you that don't know me well enough, you might not tell the whole truth. You might say fine when you realize that inside of you, you're not fine because you're worried about work or your children or your parents or some other thing. It's a small mask and yet it's a mask. A person might be hurting badly and conceal it with a great big smile. Another mask. Psychologists tell us that if a person tells you several times during a conversation that they're not lying, it typically means they are lying yet another mask. Lots of people have different masks for different days and perhaps for different occasions. Some we wear at work, others at home, others at social events. Masks allow us to assume a different persona and that persona hides our true self. And with technology providing us with all these virtual masks, we can now hide behind usernames, passwords, blogs, and Twitter handles. Halloween's only a day away, so it's a good time to embrace wearing costumes and masks. So before I get into the more serious part of today's topic, how about a few Halloween jokes? So a man was talking to his friend and he said, I've never been so insulted in my life. I went to a Halloween party last night, and at midnight, they asked me to take off my mask. And his friend looked a little puzzled, and he said, well, that's pretty typical. Why are you so angry? The man said, I wasn't wearing a mask. Where do vampires invest their money? In cryptocurrency. Did you hear about the skeletons that were famous? They used to be somebody. Knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo hoo. Don't cry. Your parents didn't eat all the candy. Why do werewolves never know the time? Because they're not win wolves. What do witches get when their shoes are too tight? Candy corns. Why did the ghost cross the road? 
because it was a poultry geist. Why did the raccoon take off his mask? Because he was playing possum. Why didn't the skeleton cross the road? It didn't have the guts. Where do zombies host their websites? On the worldwide walking dead. Okay, admittedly, some of those were real groaners. So back to our topic beneath the mask. Presenting a certain face to the world is something that most people are very familiar with. It's a very common behavior, something we all do once in a while. You have a day when you're feeling a bit off color, and yet if people ask you how you're doing, you say you're fine because you don't want to burden them with how you're feeling. And you might even give them a great big smile. Beneath the mask of sounding positive, you're keeping your true feelings to yourself. We wear masks for a lot of reasons, for fun, for protection, to make a statement. The mask bandit, for example, obscures his face because it protects him from retaliation and at the same time probably invokes fear and uncertainty in the people that he's robbing. Donning the mask of a cultural or political or even a religious figure can lend that person power and sometimes further his legacy. Those who wear masks to protect their faces from environmental hazards may end up sending a message of caution or even invoke fear in outside observers. I suspect when COVID started and was new to us that the masks were a constant reminder of health hazards. In many cases though, masks play a more lighthearted role. They allow the wearer to take part in a festival or become someone they're not, even for a short period of time. Halloween, for example, the kids love to dress up, almost as much as getting those candy treats. In reality, we can probably categorize the type of mask that people wear into two broad categories. Those meant to be deceitful because they're actually hiding lies and essentially projecting a false image, most typically to deceive someone or sometimes to get approval. And those that are meant as a courteous move. For example, when we say that we're doing great because we don't wanna bur burden our friends with our woes and the problems that we're having for that day. So there's a great quote by Jeanette Winderson. Don't you, when strangers and friends come to call, straighten the cushions, clean the dishes, kick the books under the bed and put away the letter you were writing? How many of us want any of us to see us as we really are? Isn't the mirror hostile enough? True, sometimes that mirror is very hostile and especially the mirror of our minds. The different masks that people wear in the course of a day act as a social disguise and can help people get through a variety of different situations. As I said earlier, the reasons behind the mask can be both positive and negative. Sometimes we wear masks to be liked, to gain social acceptance, to hide vulnerability, to hide fear or the truth or anger or sadness or depression or pain. And sometimes we wear them to even hide excitement and happiness. Some wear masks to deceive and manipulate. And sometimes it's easier to wear a mask and take it off depending upon who we're with. Have you ever noticed that some people seem to have a fixed smile? It conceals their true emotions and their feelings. 
So it's important that we have self-awareness about the different masks that we wear and the reasons behind we're wearing them. If you're the type of person that has a self-image issue or self-esteem, perhaps you don't like your weight or you're unhappy about something, it might seem natural to show a different face to the world. However, I might suggest that it's far superior to do something about that underlying feeling of self-esteem or a self-image issue. If you're feeling inadequate about yourself in any way, it's better to be aware and to try to do something about it. What's most important is to be aware of why you're using mask. In Words That Heal, Ernest Holmes wrote, it's when the self goes with the gift that it becomes an offering of love. How can any gift be an offering of love if we're wearing mask? And by the way, wearing a mask can get pretty tiresome. It's a very tiring approach to life. Sometimes I think we should do more of what Karen was singing about right before the message in her song, To Be Here. She gave us great advice. Uncover the truth about who you are. Let the barrier be lifted that always keeps you apart. Quit your hiding and be ready to start to step into your power and trust your heart. Nathaniel Hawthorne in The Scarlet Letter wrote this. No man for any considerable period can wear one face to himself and another to the multitude without finally getting bewildered as to which may be the true. Listen to that again. No man for any considerable period can wear one face to himself and another to the multitude without finally getting bewildered as to which may be the true. Even the Bible in Luke 12, 2, 3, has us quoting Jesus telling his disciples, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which you have spoken in the ear of closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. We can try hiding behind masks, but what Jesus is telling us is that it doesn't work. Eventually, the truth prevails. Have you ever seen a friend of yours do something that really shocked you at the very core of your being? Something that made you perhaps even think, I thought I knew him or her better than that. What happens when we discover what lies beneath the mask that our friends and families have been wearing in front of us? Do we blame the people wearing the mask? Even in our philosophy of no blame, I suspect that we might want to point a finger at society that defines how we are supposed to act and thus seems to make masks necessary sometimes. Or perhaps it seems easier to dislike people who put up a show about liking us while they're talking about us behind our back. And what about those spouses who wake up every morning wipe the tears from their eyes, and smile to the world, telling everybody that everything is all right. Hey, I've been that spouse. No longer, though. I've learned it's just not worth trying to continually put up a mask and pretend it's far better to just let the real me hang out. And what I've learned in my many years of life is, when I wear a mask, it's myself I must look at for not having the strength to show others who I truly am. Perhaps because I was feeling I might be judged or ridiculed or ostracized, whatever the reason, 
Think about all the masks that we encounter every day. That young girl who wants to stay thin and will use whatever means to be accepted. The married couple who fight at home, but when they're out in public, it's nothing but sweet music. And the hundreds of people who declare to be fine, when in fact, the word fine is a mask for being in a state of total misery. Richard Bach wrote, the worst lies are the lies we tell ourselves. We live in denial of what we do, even what we think. We do this because we're afraid, we fear we will not find love. And when we find it, we fear we'll lose it. We fear that if we do not have love, we will be unhappy. Society defines rules and we develop masks for how to deal with them. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, ask yourself, are you going to meet the world wearing the mask of a person you're not? Oh, and by the way, if you're telling yourself that you're not wearing a mask right now and that you aren't a person that actually wears masks, I suggest you ask yourself this question. Could it be perhaps the mask is so stuck to who I think I am that I don't even know it's there? Could it be perhaps the mask is so stuck to who I think I am that I don't even know it's there? There are so many masks. There's a cryptic list available out on the website, which includes among others, the mask of the drama king or queen, the guru know-it-all, the pretty dunce, and the politically correct. It's actually a list of 20 different types of mask. It includes the gentle woman. For those of us who up until now have thought of ourselves as a gentle woman, newsflash, every woman has a bitch streak. Ask my friends, back me up in a corner over an issue which I feel is connected to my integrity and my Leo claws come out. Truly, most people wear a mask and are putting up a facade of pretense at least some of the time. Perhaps it's time that you determine who you really are. Yes, each of us. Our facade speaks to whatever it is that we're trying to hide. In 1957, an entire monastery in Thailand was being relocated by a group of monks. And on the day that they were to move the giant clay Buddha, they realized it weighed a lot. And it was not a task for a few monks. And in examining the situation, one of the monks noticed a large crack in the clay. On closer investigation, he saw that there was a golden light emanating from that crack. So he used a hammer and a chisel and he chipped away at the exterior until he revealed the statue that was in fact made of solid gold. And by the way, we now know it weighs 121 tons. There's a bit of background for this story. In the 18th century, the Burmese were notorious for melting the gold of nations that they conquered. And in 1767, during the Burmese-Siamese War, the Siamese covered the golden Buddha with terracotta and colored glass to hide its true value. No one would want to steal a simple clay statue, but the world would not know about the golden Buddha hidden there for centuries because during the attack, all of those monks were killed. So it wasn't until 190 years later that the great treasure was discovered. The people of Sukhata had been successful in protecting the golden Buddha from outside invaders. 
because when the Burmese had conquered Ayutthaya, they destroyed most of the prominent temples and indeed melted much of the gold from that particular kingdom. The golden Buddha remains intact and continues to be a strong symbol today. The monks actually saved it by masking it with clay and colored glass, a full body mask, so to speak. Sometimes we get disconnected from who we are. We cover ourselves with so many masks that they form a shell around us, much like the clay around the golden Buddha. And we can get lost in all of those masks. Over the course of our life, our golden self gets covered in layer upon layer of clay. And the heaviest layer of clay is of our own choosing. It's our own limiting self-beliefs. That person in us that forgets our dreams and forgets our potential. It's those masks we wear when we pretend we're someone we're not. Sure, some of the layers of clay are added by external conditioning, by our parents, by our schools and our teachers, by bosses and coworkers, by society, by the media, churches, government, corporations, all kinds of those exterior conditioners. Eventually though, we become so laden with all of that clay that we forget that the golden self is there right beneath. The key is to remember all along the gold is there. Our light is shining if even through a small crack. The light of the divine that lives within us is always there and way closer than we think. What might it take for you to chip away at your mask and unveil the golden you? The secret to that question is actually looking at your past. Quite often something occurs in our life, perhaps a loss, a tragedy of some sort. Sometimes we realize life is short and we begin chipping away at the clay to rediscover those things that we were once passionate about and we let go of because of that tragedy or because of some shift in our life. And then we reconnect with our real self, our essence of love and light. Or sometimes we just notice that we're discontent and perhaps we seek out a trusted practitioner our minister or a therapist so that we can reconnect with the things that can propel us forward to living a life that's full of joy and love. Imagine a world where every person returned to their natural state, their golden Buddha self. Just imagine if everyone chipped away all of their full body mask and Quit all of those things that we've layered ourselves in and became our true selves. May Sarton wrote, we have to dare to be ourselves, however frightening or strange that self may prove to be. And one way to lessen the fear and the strangeness is to laugh at ourselves. The song that Karen is singing for the offertory today reminds us to just let go and something better might appear. And who knows what would happen if we use joy to replace fear. In the song, Karen challenges us to dare to be like a shooting star, unstoppable and free. Albert Schweitzer advises this, Impart as much as you can of your spiritual being to those who are on the road with you and accept as something precious what comes back to you from them. And by the way, don't try to wear other people's masks. You don't know what their pain is or who they're trying to impress. And you don't know which face they have on. 
what if we just kept learning and kept improving and remembered that nothing we are today came to us in one day and nothing we've learned on this earth came to us from birth because from birth, who we are is divine beings. Let's just embrace our golden selves. I read somewhere that when we're born, we're actually born with two fears. One is the fear of falling, and the other is the fear of loud bangs. Every other fear we picked up along the way. Everything has been learned and progressed over time. We are who we were made. And every person was made as a divine being. So enjoy the person you were made to be, regardless of who is watching. In July of 2001, the Science of Mind magazine wrote these words. God is a divine presence in our heart, enabling us to think and know and will and do and recognize each other in God, to behold in each other the living presence. Imagine if each of us decided to behold in each other the living presence. What if you were to ask yourself, what is one thing I might do today to live without any mask? Or perhaps, what might I need to change about myself to drop my mask and let my light shine brighter? I invite you to ask those questions, but remember that they're gentle and loving questions. Some days might be better than others. And heed this advice from Reverend Michael Beckwith. People who have no vision for their life are sleepwalking without a hint as to why they are here or what their purpose is. So I invite you to wake up to your own magnificence, to that glorious golden self. Drop the mask and be you. And so in summary, how much you learn to come out from beneath the mask so you can truly fall into the all. Notice the mask you wear. Become aware of any mask and recognize your own social disguises. Know that truth prevails. The masks are eventually going to fall away. Avoid lying to yourself and don't deny who you are. Chip away those layers of clay and get to your golden self. And step fully into being your true self, that divine being. Nothing we are today came to us in one day, and nothing we learned on earth came to us from birth. So here's your affirmation for the week. How is it I so easily and willingly make the choice today to release the mask I wear, to step fully into being my true self, and to know my light creates miracles. And your challenge for the week is to come out from beneath those masks. Observe yourself this week and notice the mask you're wearing. Notice those little white lies that you might be telling about who you are because you're wearing a mask. See if they fit. And if the mask doesn't fit, let it go. And check in with yourself a couple times every day. Notice how you're doing. Notice if there's any fear within you about being your own golden self. And if you're hiding yourself behind a mask. Let's pray. 
<sighs> just taking a deep nourishing breath. Allowing that divine self, that golden self that is you to just shine brightly. Moving into yourself where you know the essence of the divine that is right where you are. Before you, behind you, above you, below you, through you, as you, in you. Hmm. All that God is emanating from you. And what I know is that each of us is becoming more aware of how we mask our true feelings, of how we sometimes are not our authentic selves. And we are becoming aware of that and chipping those masks away so that our true golden self can shine forth in this world. Hmm. So I am grateful. I'm grateful that I know the God without is the God within me. I'm grateful that I know that I can tap into that divine essence at any time and know that what truly matters is love and I can spread love. So it's from the gratitude that I just release these words into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing that the divine has already said yes, knowing that everything we've requested has already been answered and done. So I just say amen and we can affirm it together. And so it is. And I'm happy to say that we're still looking for the absolute right computer. So uh, I appreciate your donations and the money that's been coming in that's gonna help us pay for that computer. And thank you so much for your financial support, for your uh, emotional support, for all the little notes that come through. They make such a difference in my life and in the life of this community, that we can share the essence of who we are, the real truth, our golden selves. So thanks again for your donations. Enjoy our offertory song. 